Really, it is really simplifying math and it's teaching math as a quanqua, right? Which is a language, language, is a language, right? So it's important that people learn math not just as a language, but in the simplest form of communicating. Because what has happened for me, I can speak from my own personal ex experience and also growing up in British Guyana and also in other countries, what I find is a lot of people are suffering for the, from the intimidation, fear, and apprehension of math. And listening to folks, the first thing they tell you is that they will skip class when math comes up. They don't want to do math. And from my experience and my search and research, I learned that the way we were taught math by the British and the Americans, or the Europeans and Americans, is based on memorization, resuscitation, and rote learning. Now. Is that all? Uh, from, I'm talking from my experience. Right. I'm talking from my experience and other people. That's what they're saying. So for those folks who are good at math, being taught by the British or by the Americans, they will tell you that the reason why they're good at math is because they have what is called a photogenic memory, right? But many of us don't have a photogenic memory. So we can't photogenically memorize the formulas of how it is being done. It's, it's all about cramming. It's all about cramming for most people, right? So that's hard. However, I've, I've learned over the years that if math is taught as a language to communicate and then you comprehend the terminology that is used in math, then you wouldn't have a problem solving equations. That's the difference between grassmatics and the math I was taught by the British. Remember, I was first taught by the British and then by the Americans. I, I realize that the, the approach I do is really making people look at math perceptionally and not conceptionally. That's very interesting. You're <laughs> confusing us. You're not making math any simple. Well, what happens is this. Remember now, like I said, most of us learn math by memorization or recessation or learning. Now, it has its qualities, yes, but it's not effective for most people. The question should be asked, why is many people in the United States, the Caribbean, and even South America, and even in most African countries, are fearing or failing math? If math was supposed to be taught for you to better yourself, then you shouldn't be fearing it or failing it. There's a high percentage of, United States, of people who fail fear or being intimidated by math. That means something is not right. That means we have to take a different, they would call a new, approach to math in a way that you first eradicate or obliterate the fear. That's what you want to deal with. The, so this program is really based on, on, on obliterating or eradicating the fear of math. Okay, to, well, to extricate pe people, students of math, their fear, what you're trying to, to come up with is basically the grammar of math. Not only and I don't know of anyone who loved grammar, <laughs> all of math, as you're trying to tell us, also simple language, English, and how to well, it. what you're saying has, has truth to it because of the fact of how we're taught. It's not only in math we're taught certain ways, uh, certain things that we're failing or fearing, also in grammar. That is so true. But when we're talking about it learning as a language, we're talking about the simplicity of it. And we're talking about looking at it perceptional. Another thing, too, is not taught well is the which we call the etymology of words, words in its original meaning, and the simplest form of comprehending it. That is not taught. So once you do that from the simple, let me give an example I'm talking about. When I ask, I yes, coming <laughs> okay. When I ask a lot of teachers and educators to define the word half, they struggle with the definition of the word half. It's simple, why should they? Well, because of the way they conceive the definition, not the way they perceive it. But the What's way your perception about half then? Well, half should, if, well, half should be defined as something divided into two equal parts. That's not new. Uh, to you it isn't, but to many people I've talked to and interviewed, et cetera, it has. But I'm happy, wife, I'm happy to hear to you it isn't, I'm, I'm, and that's, a, that's great to know, to know that. But to most people, like I said, they struggle with that. 
And the reason why they struggle with that, because here what they would say, they said half means half. But that's not the definition of the word, right? You see? So uh, that goes again about language. Words need, when you learn the etymology of the word, which is the origin of the word and what ethnic group the word originated of or from, then you get a wider scope of comprehension of what it is. Unfortunately, many of us look to the dictionary for the meaning of word. And the word dictionary means to dictate. So what happens is that you're not really getting the original essence or meaning of the word. That's the same thing with math. Remember now, if math is taught as a language, then you have to articulate it. You have to express it. And it must be comprehensive that it's not complicated to folks. I don't so, understand why math should be told as, taught as, as, as a language. You say that again? I, I, I don't understand why math should be taught as a language. Because what we're doing right now, we're communicating in a language. So it's easy. See, for example, every word you say to me and every word I say to you, and I had to write it on a paper, and it has to be an equation for you to figure out what I'm but saying. But figures make more sense than, than language because you're complicating things. Yeah, you but, but you remember now, uh, before there was writing, there was oral, oral speaking. That's history. <laughs> so you say nine is the highest number. Percep perceptionally, yes. Nine is Why is it the, the highest number? The highest number we don't know. It's, it's infinite. It's, 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 it's well, well, that is unfortunate if we do not K-N-O-W, and I pronounce that word canal instead of N-O-N-O, -no, right? It's unfortunate if we do not, if you, you're saying we do not canal what the highest number is, and that is unfortunate. And that goes to what I'm saying earlier, the way we're taught, and that is true. Most people, you ask them what's the highest number, they would say infinity or Google or all these different things they would say. Or they would say num numbers never stop, they keep going on and on. You see, that goes to how we conceptualize the question or perceptualize the question. You see, if you're looking at the question perceptionally, you are able to say that nine is the highest number. Why? Because after nine, you're starting all over again. Because the starting number is not one, the starting number is zero. So it's zero to nine are called integers, basic or primary numbers. And so that's called a rule of measurement. So when you get to nine, that's the highest. All you're doing is starting all over again, one, zero, one, 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 two. But you're repeating it in what we call two digit, three digit, four digit, et cetera. Why, why, why do you refuse to say 10? <laughs> and instead you say one, zero. <laughs> because, because I dabble in, in linguistics. <laughs> And the math that I teach, grammatics, these are good questions you're asking, by the way. Uh, the, 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 the math what I'm asking, not asking. Uh, asking. Asking. Yeah. asking, asking, yeah. Is that your, your variety of, uh, you know, avoiding Ks and, or uh, uh, stressing the, 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 uh, the yeah, that K has, because you say yeah, no? Exactly, the K, yes. And, and, uh, but let me answer your question before right, I get into that. Yeah. Right. But, well, you said, well, am I avoiding saying 10? Well, because 10 is just an expression that misrepresents the figure one zero. Now think about it. You have something called integers, basic and primary numbers, which is from zero to nine. And each numerical symbol has an identity, which we call name, like zero, one, two, right? So each figure, right, is already identified for what it is. So when you get to the highest now, and you're starting over, what you're doing is just using the first symbol, which is zero, and the second, which is the one. So you read in left, right, say one, zero, one, one, instead of 10. Because 10 is just an expression, but it does not represent linguistically and perceptional, and even, as they would say mathematically, one, zero, because you're talking about figures. Here, again, another example I give you based on what you, you just asked. Okay, you're trying to give emphasis to zero, Yes, ex tend, exactly. No, you, earlier Beautiful. you said, you know, we start at number one. No, I, I know that we start at number one. Me too, in the British school. I too, in American schools too, right. But yeah. you said you started at, at zero. zero right. you, you're trying to recognize zero over and over yeah. again in your... Yeah, because, what, it? yeah. because it's, you see, when you get to the highest, you have to, if you're going to start all over, you have to start at zero.